The corporate power play over the fate of Australia's leading newspaper group has erupted into a full-blown political backlash against mining billionaire Gina Reinhart's move on the Fairfax print empire. The communications minister, Stephen Conroy, has accused Ms Reinhart of seeking to turn the Fairfax papers into the Mining Gazette. At the same time, the company is resisting her demand for seats on the board unless she agrees to respect its editorial independence. Political editor Chris Ullman has the latest. The age of print is rolling to a close. The media landscape is changing radically and forever as the nation's oldest paper empire fights to survive. And a weakened Fairfax has become a takeover target for mining billionaire Gina Reinhardt. Her interest is shaking Canberra. I think we should all be very concerned at this turn of events. Sign up to the Charter of Editorial Independence. A strong democracy requires that editorial independence. Like an observation night. Yesterday, Fairfax announced it would cut 1,900 jobs over three years and turn its Melbourne and Sydney broadsheets into tabloids by March. For 180 years, Fairfax has been chronicling the life of this, this city, this state, this nation, and we have been doing so without fear or favour. And all we ask is to be continued to be allowed to keep doing that. The nation's leaders care about the job cuts, but they care a lot more about the manoeuvring in the Fairfax boardroom because that could threaten their jobs. Earlier this year, uh, in the essay I wrote for the monthly, I did raise uh, my concerns about uh, a few Australians uh, with enormous wealth seeking to have a disproportionate say in our public debate and a disproportionate influence on public policy making. And sadly, what we are now seeing unfold uh, may well be that happening. Gina Reinhardt's private investment company, Hancock Prospecting, has lifted its stake in Fairfax from 13 to 18.7 per cent, making her the largest single shareholder. With that comes a call for three spots on the eight strong board. But much more significant is her demand for the right to hire and fire editors and make significant editorial decisions. For the last 20 years, the reporting of Fairfax newspapers has been protected by a charter, by an agreement between the board and management and the journalists, which has a simple purpose, which means that the board cannot interfere with the reporting of the papers. The existing board has pushed back hard. The chairman, Roger Corbett, has refused to agree to the terms. The board is, as of a few minutes ago, 100% opposed to a member of the board or any clique on the board having that authority. The government believes Gina Reinhardt has form in driving the mainstream media to the right. She bought a neat 10% of the 10 network and on the heels of that, firebrand media commentator Andrew Bolt morphed into a political broadcaster. Labor this week monster Tony Abbott for his negativity. And the ABC 730 happily joined in. Buying the media to change it was an idea floated by the staunchly conservative climate change sceptic Lord Monckton when he visited Australia last year. In Perth, he urged a free market think tank to capture the media high ground. Devoting some time and effort to encouraging those we know who are super rich to invest in, invest in perhaps even establishing a new satellite TV channel. A government convinced that it's on the receiving end of harsh treatment from News Limited papers is alarmed by the thought of another hostile media player entering the political fray. She certainly has a, has a commercial right uh, to do what she has done, but it appears to be that she will go a step further, not respect the Charter of Independence and reserve her right to direct journalists uh, with uh, <coughs> instructions that follow her commercial imperatives. A former editor of The Age believes Gina Reinhardt's push for ownership has a narrow focus. Gina has every right to 
to, to own the company. Uh, she's, a, she's an Australian citizen. Uh, it's an open register share book. Anybody can buy into Fairfax. But what she will represent is very much the sectional interests of the mining industry and those other free marketeers who believe that the important thing in Australia is to allow business to do its business unfettered by government. As a group, the coalition seems unruffled by the thought that a mining magnate might want to dictate editorial policy on three of Australia's most important mastheads. But the opposition's communications spokesman is concerned. Our democracy depends on a free press, and that includes broadcasters as well, of course. Uh, the, the demise of newspapers or the decline of newspapers is a real worry because they have been the big foundations of news gathering and journalism. Um, if a, news, a newspaper was seen to be uh, unbalanced, to be uh, lacking objectivity, to be a biased you know, publication, its influence would decline. The tectonic plates of the media haven't come to rest yet. Tomorrow, News Limited is expected to announce its own round of job cuts as it too tries to re-engineer itself for an uncertain future. The government will say that it cares about those jobs too, but its heart won't be in it. The bitter feud between News and Labor is still bubbling behind the scenes and will boil over again when the curious case of suspended Speaker Peter Slipper comes back before the Federal Court in July. That will make headlines, as long as there are papers. Political editor Chris Yeoman.